This is getting zero coverage in any mainstream media. If you've watched my videos lately, you may have heard me talk about Schedule F. Uh, I, this is likely the only channel where you've heard anybody talk about Schedule F because no one is really covering it, but I think it's so important to cover. So I'm gonna wrap this up in about 60 seconds here. This is the single most chilling part of a potential second Trump term. He wants to reinstate something called Schedule F. Schedule F was an executive order that he passed in October of 2020. It wouldn't go into an effect because it wouldn't go into effect because he would lose in November of 2020. But what Schedule F sought to do is reclassify hundreds of thousands of federal employees, career civil servants, as political appointees. So right now, when a president comes into office, he or she can fire, replace about 4,000 people in the federal government. Those are the political appointees. The other hundreds of thousands of people who work in the government, they are career civil servants. You can't fire them. They're just, they're not Democrat, not Republican. They're just doing their job. Now, what Trump wants to do is take hundreds of thousands of them, reclassify them as, pol as political appointees so that he can immediately fire them. So think about what happens, for example, if all of a sudden people who work in the DOJ, the FBI, the IRS, the FCC are no longer career civil servants who are protected from from being fired they're no longer these are people who are have adherence to the law but he wants to replace them who have adherence and loyalty to donald trump think about what could happen for example remember back in 2020 when you had a bunch of right-wing sycophants saying that the that the ballots needed to be thrown away in milwaukee or detroit or philadelphia and even bill barr the head of the DOJ as the attorney general recognizing like how, how clownish all of this was, he called those claims of fraud bullshit. Those were his exact words because he knew that he couldn't get the career prosecutor base of the DOJ to sign on to these bogus claims. But now imagine that the DOJ is staffed with people not who have any adherence to the law or the Constitution, but rather whose loyalty is to Donald Trump. And those people come forward, people like Cash Patel and Stephen Miller and... Uh, and Jeffrey Clark, and they come forward and they say, you know what? We agree. We think there was fraud in Milwaukee. We think there was fraud in Philadelphia. We think there was fraud in Detroit or Madison or any other Democratic population center for these swing states that will determine whether a Democrat wins or a Republican wins. And so we think that we need to uh, throw out some votes or, or – um, or seize the voting machines in these population centers and uh, really take a good look at it. What do you think will happen if all of a sudden – Philadelphia's votes are at risk in a place like Pennsylvania. Do you think Democrats can win? And if you take Philadelphia and Wisconsin and Michigan, for example, and do that across the board, do you think Democrats will ever be able to win an election again? This is quite literally the difference between a democratic system of government and an autocratic system of government. I've been sounding the alarm about this, not because, you know, this is more immediately significant than, than or, or important than uh, abortion rights or climate change or health care because they're all important. But if we ever want the opportunity to to be able to be in control of government again, to win elections again, it relies on making sure that Donald Trump does not get into office so that he cannot re-implement Schedule F. That is the single most important thing. It is existential for us as a democracy. Once you go down that road, once you cross that Rubicon, you can't come back. When you have people in government whose job it is to ensure that the head of a, that the head of a party, the head of state, keeps winning elections, that's exactly what they'll do. So if we want to have the opportunity for Democrats to win in the future, for example, if you are, you know, a young person or, or if, if you're more progressive than this Democratic administration and you're sour on on Biden or Harris, whatever it is, and you feel like you don't feel like it's necessary to go out and vote. Maybe you don't like both of them and, and you'll come out next time. If you want there to be a next time, it is imperative that you show up this time because this is our opportunity to make sure that donald trump and his band of sycophants cannot rig the game to ensure that democrats never take power again and i cannot wrap my head around why the media isn't talking about this one issue on repeat 24 hours a day and this is what blew my mind when we were dealing with the whole you know the whole potential of biden dropping out 
that that was the only story on the news and they were completely abdicating the real story here which and of course that's an important story but not more important than the prospect of losing our democracy forever so i will continue beating this drum i think it is the single most important story in politics right now the prospect that if donald trump takes office and he can consolidate power in the executive branch what he really means to do and it's so wonky that that you can't hear about this in one minute sound bites on cable tv but it's important that you hear about it now what donald trump wants to do is consolidate power in the executive branch by making sure that the federal government is not you know, a, a block of civil servants whose adherence is to the law. He wants to make sure that they are a block of political appointees who are loyal to him. And if that is the case, if he's able to turn these members of the DOJ, the FBI, the people whose job it is to investigate this stuff, the people whose job it is to investigate misinformation from foreign actors who may be benefiting the Republican Party, that would go away whose job it is to investigate voter fraud, imaginary voter fraud that Republicans have been pushing for the last five years that didn't exist. They would validate those claims. They would be in charge of the IRS. Think about how they could weaponize the IRS against, against Democrats. Think about what our taxes would look like if all of a sudden all of these people uh, um, whose job it was to, to properly execute the law in the IRS started taking revenge against any Democratic officials. Think about what it could do at the FCC if all of a sudden you have lawsuits against against anybody who says something on air that doesn't uh, completely benefit the Republicans, that isn't groveling enough toward Donald Trump. Think about the lawsuits that could come forward. Think about the chilling effect that that could have. All of Project 2025, especially the agenda of, of Schedule F and consolidating power for the executive branch, is so chilling but so important. So I... I I know I've spoken about this in a few of my videos and I've done a few shorts about it. Please, if you see those shorts, if you see those videos, share them. Make, people, make sure that people know. Tell your friends and family. I guarantee you they have not heard about this. This is the most underreported story in the entire country right now, but in my opinion, it is the single most important. The issue of Schedule F could not be more important. Donald Trump wants to reclassify the entire federal workforce to be political appointees so that they can be loyal not to the law, not to the Constitution, but to him. Democrats will not be able to win elections in the aftermath of that happening. That, that will be it. We are on the doorstep of autocracy right now. And I don't say that to scare you. I, I say that to inspire you, to let you know that we have the opportunity right now to, to end that, to repudiate that, to make sure that that doesn't happen. We still have four months and we do it with a new candidate who is able to properly prosecute this case, somebody, somebody who is charismatic and articulate, who is popular with young people and people of color, and who is best positioned to campaign against a convicted felon. She is a lifelong prosecutor whose job it was to take down criminals, frauds, sexual predators. Donald Trump is all of those things. You could not have scientifically engineered a better candidate to go against Donald Trump right now at this period of time.